Hi everyone, we're here in Lisbon. It's actually very windy and very cold and I'm not dressed for it. But it's okay because I'm here with a very spicy new product and that is the new BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe. It's a very long name for another very long car but it's quite an important one for Munich and that's why we're here to try it out. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. Now the first thing we have to get out of the way first is that while the 2 Series Coupe is rear-wheel drive, this car is front-wheel drive. Now this is based on BMW's latest front-wheel drive architecture, which is actually a revised version of the UKL platform found in the Mini models, as well as the X1, X2, 2 Series Active Tourer and the 2 Series Grand Tourer. This is of course the four-door coupe version of the 1 Series hatch that was recently revealed. And it's the first BMW sedan after the 1 Series sedan that was only available in China to come with front-wheel drive. Now because this is front-wheel drive, the proportions are also a little bit different. You've got a much shorter bonnet that leans a little bit further forward and this car is a lot more compact than a 3 Series for example. This being a Grand Coupe, it needs to be a little bit more sporty and on the styling front at least, this certainly delivers. It's got a very aggressive looking front end with these sharp headlights that lead all the way into the grille. And you can see here there's a little bit of a notch down here as well, which I think looks rather cool. Now these are LED headlights which come with these hexagonal daytime running lights, which are quite nice as well. Now down at the front here, you've got the trapezoidal grille over here. It's joined in the middle and actually it's very, very large. It's very wide as well. But because it's situated quite low down, I think it actually works and it actually makes the car look very aggressive and sporty. Not unlike say the 7 series facelift, which I thought was a little bit Mm, it's, it's all right, but it's not the best. Now along the side, as I said earlier, you've got a short bonnet and this low slung roof line that sweeps all the way to the back of the car. And the boot is a little bit shorter than you usually find on larger models. You also got the uh, BMW Hofmeister King over here, as well as these frameless doors, which look very nice. Now the rear is I think the least successful part of the design because the boot is very short, there's nowhere for this line to go so it is a little bit taller than you'd normally expect. There is a little bit of that Gran Turismo design uh, aspect like for instance the 6 series Gran Turismo as well as the 3 series Gran Turismo. Adding to this visual height there are quite a few elements over here, you've got the bar across here, there's a line down here as well as another line down here and that does add a bit of height to the look and the black bar I feel can be done without. I think it's just a little bit too busy. However, there are some very nice touches here such as these LED taillights over here. These are L-shaped and very, very slim so they look very, very nice. And over here you've got a large diffuser on the M Sport models. Unfortunately, they've also got some fake vents over here so um, it's not so great. Overall though, I think it's quite a successful design. Could have been better, better at the rear, but I think it's not too bad. In here, of course, it's very usual BMW stuff with the center console angled towards you, so it's very driver focused. And you've got a lot of trapezoidal elements over here, just like in the latest 3 Series. Now, this dashboard is shared with the 1 Series, and I think it's actually a quite nice design. You've got quite a lot of soft touch plastics down here and even down here, and you've got some stitching over here, which makes it look a little bit more expensive. Now in terms of technology, you've got the latest BMW operating system which comes with big 
touch panels over here showing you all kinds of information and the screen measures up to 10.25 inches across you've also got a second screen up here showing you the instruments and so on now the gauges over here they are of a c shape and you've got a very interesting reverse direction ref counter as well build quality is very good like i said there's lots of soft touch plastics everything feels very solid and this being a bmw all the controls are very well laid out everything has a logic to them they're all grouped in the same place so you've got the climate controls over here you've got stuff for your radio here and all your drive controls as well as the iDrive are placed in this little island down here and that makes it much more intuitive than say something like a Mercedes A-Class. The driving position is also very good. You do sit a little bit higher up than you do in a 3 Series, perhaps because this is a front-wheel drive car. But just like in other BMWs, the driving position is spot on. You can get the seat and the steering wheel exactly where you want them to be. So you can have this very close to your chest, perfect for sporty driving. You can also get this car with some nice trim over here, which can light up on this part over here as well as down on the doors with the ambient lighting that you so desire which I think is a nice touch. Now the whole reason why BMW has chosen a front-wheel drive architecture is because it frees up more space in the interior cabin especially for rear occupants. Now the first things first when you come in the car the sill is a little bit tall so it, you do have to step up quite a bit to get inside. Once inside however there is quite a bit of space at the back, especially legroom. However, you don't get to enjoy all of it because the front seats are placed a little bit low, so you can't slide your feet all the way in. However, this is perhaps a trade-off for a better driving position. You sit lower in the front, so I guess I can't really complain that much about it. However, the headroom is a little bit restricted because this is a grand coupe, so the roof slopes a little bit further towards the rear. And that means when you're sitting straight up, your head does brush onto the headliner but if you're slouching a little bit forward it's not too bad you're not going to be complaining that much at the back you also got rear aircon vents which you don't get in the mercedes a-class sedan and you've also got two cup holders down here just like in any other bmw now despite the 2 Series Grand Coupe having a short rear end, the boot space is actually not too bad. You've got 430 litres of boot space over here, so you're not going to be complaining too much when you're shoving in a few luggage bags in here. What's even more impressive is that you can lift this boot floor here, and you've got a separate compartment for you to store even more things in, especially stuff you want to keep away from prying eyes. Now, let's go for a drive. The car we're in right now is a 218i and that is powered by a 1.5 litre turbocharged 3 cylinder engine making 140 PS and 220 newton meters of torque. It is of course mated to an 8 speed automatic and drive is sent to the front wheels. It will get from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 8.7 seconds. Now this engine when it was used in the earlier BMW models felt a little bit rough but this one feels much smoother. It's not a lot of vibrations going through the wheels, the wheel, the pedals. It's very refined actually. And there's also not a lot of noise. I'm gonna fall the throttle a little bit. And you hear a little bit of that three cylinder rumble, but it's not too bad. And it does sound a little bit like a BMW straight six when you're really up on it. Of course, when you're driving it normally, it kind of sounds a little bit like a Perodua, but it's not so loud that you notice. Now this engine, like most BMW turbo engines, is very bunchy, even though this has not very big numbers. It's not a lot of turbo lag, and once you get past 2000 RPM, it really gets going. This being a front-wheel drive BMW, the gearbox comes from ISIN, not ZF, and it's a little bit less quick to respond, especially when you're flooring the throttle, but otherwise it's still very smooth. The gear changes are fairly fast. So again, it's quite an agreeable gearbox, despite not being the best of 
the best. We've now come to a, um, a small town where there are a little bit, there are a few bumps, a few potholes, and so far the car's handling it very well. The ride is very good. It is a little bit firm, but not uncomfortable. There is some pliancy in here, not like say the G20 330i that we were driving a year ago. Here there's still a little bit of compliance and of course very good body control as well. The dampers working very well here. This car doesn't come with adaptive dampers so it's a very very good compromise. Very well tuned. Going around corners this 218i with its normal passive suspension is very well sorted. The steering is very meaty, of course helped along by this very thick M Sport steering wheel. Even on these wet roads, there seems to be quite a bit of grip, enough that I can drive it a little bit quickly without having to worry about stability or traction. Now BMW says that this car comes with something called ARB, which is a form of more advanced traction control system. Now this is the same thing that was introduced first on the i3s and then was also found on the new 1 series. In this, the traction control is not a separate module with the electronic stability control, it's mated to the ECU. And that means that it can control the amount of intervention in a more precise way. Now BMW says that this system acts three times faster than a regular system, but the driver feels like it's 10 times faster. Now this system is only found on the front wheel drive models, such as the 1 series and 2 series. There are no plans to introduce it on rear wheel drive models. Now interestingly, on front wheel drive models, the system cannot be switched off even when the stability control is turned off. BMW says that there's no point turning off the traction control with a front wheel drive car because all you get is understeer. You can of course turn the system off on a X-Drive or wheel drive model. In terms of the way this car performs versus a rear wheel drive car, there's not really much into it. Of course, you do have the sensation of the car pulling you rather than pushing you, but unless you're really aggressive with the throttle, it's not really that apparent. Now this car is of course BMW's entry-level sedan and for many people, especially in Malaysia, it will be their first BMW. This car is of course smaller than the 3 Series, especially the very large G20 model and driving along these roads, it does feel very easy to place on the road, especially when visibility is so good up front. Of course, at the back, you've got a small screen to contend with. Now we're in something a bit more special, the M235i. And from the moment you drive it, you realize this is a much, much more serious car. Under the bonnet is a 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder engine making 306 PS and 450 newton meters of torque. Now this variable 4-wheel drive system can send up to 100% of its torque to the rear wheels, although in the real world it's closer to 60 to 80%. Most of the time, it's front-wheel drive. Almost immediately, you can feel that this is a far sportier engine. There's a lot of punch that happens instantaneously the minute you floor the throttle and it's eager to rev as well. This will get you to silly speeds very, very quickly, especially as this is not quite a big car. Now, this turn of speed is also accompanied by a very, very aggressive engine noise. It's not quite a regular four-cylinder engine noise. It's got a little bit of a rumble to it and that makes it quite an enjoyable car to hustle around in. Now what's also making this a very enjoyable car to drive is the tortoise suspension and chassis setup. Now this car of course has the adaptive dampers on this top spec model and this car also comes with a Torsen limited slip differential. Now this gives the car so much traction whether you're just accelerating in a straight line or going through the corners. Now that I'm driving this car a little bit more quickly through the corners, I can really start to feel this car's more front engine 
bias to the twisties. The steering does move around quite a bit, especially when you're accelerating out of the corner. Still, there's not a lot of understeer, and you can push this thing quite hard, just like you would in a Golf R or an A35. Now we're in sport mode, and that gives the car a slightly firmer ride. And that gives us better road holding, giving this car quite a composed feel when you're driving along these roads. However, it's not too firm that it gets uncomfortable and it still has quite a bit of compliance into it. And the good thing about the suspension setup is that because it's so composed yet so compliant, it means you don't really have to think about it. You just need to focus on the road ahead and just enjoy the car. And the best thing about BMW's compact car strategy is that all models get a multi-link rear suspension instead of a torsion beam that is in the case of Mercedes's compact cars. Now this gives all models, whether it's the 218 that we were driving earlier or the 235i, a very well sorted and very sophisticated ride. Whereas if you compare it to the A200 that we get, that car felt a little bit more loose, a little bit more um, uncouth compared to this car. So in that sense, this is a very, very good move from BMW. Just in case you're wondering, the M235i Grand Coupe gets from 0 to 100 km an hour in just 4.8 seconds before reaching an electronically limited top speed of 250 km an hour. So the jury might still be out on its looks, but rest assured, the 2 Series Grand Coupe is an accomplished car to drive and it's a very, very good contender in the compact car segment. We still don't know anything about pricing or when it will come to Malaysia, but keep it locked right here at paultan.org for all the latest details.